This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good afternoon, Rabbi Say. Um, as we prepare for Pasha Shoftim and Chaydesh Elo, now the Pasha begins Shoftim v'Shoytrim Titan l'Chol b'Chol Sharecha. Judges and rulers, you should place for yourself in all of your gates. And as pointed out by the Sefer Bnei Yisachar, the first week of Chaydesh Elul, we always lay in Parsha Shoftim without exception. Parsha Shoftim is always a Parsha we lay in, the first week of, Parsha, of Chaydesh Elul. And the question then is, what does Parsha Shoftim have to do with Chaydesh Elul? Dvarim Gedoy Lameinu B'mikra the Maral says, big things are not coincidental. So what is the connection between Parsha Shoftim and Chaydesh Elul? So what? Smoking nothing, no, nothing is, but certainly big things. Certainly big things. <laughs> so we look, we look um, at the Avoida, the Kohen Gadol, Yom Kippur. Pasuk says in Achrei Mois, V'lakach midam apar, he takes the blood of the bull. V'hiza v'yatzvahoy, apnei ha-kapoyras keidma. He sprinkles with his finger on the face of the kapoyras, on the east side. So the Pasik says Haza two times. It says Vihiza and then it says Yaza Shava Pa'amim Min Adam. Yeah? So Rashi points out over there, Vihiza Vyatzvai, Haza Achas Bemashma. That's Mashma one spritz. But if Neaka Puras Yaza Sheva, Hare Achas Lamala Vishava Lamata. You sprinkle one one up. Seven below. One upward, seven below. And in fact, the Gemara, the Mishnah action, Mesech Yuma Daf Nun Gimel, Amad Beis, it says like this, Not Alas Hadam Mimisha Mimaris, by the Kohen Gadol would take the blood from the one who stirred it, because you couldn't let the blood sit, the blood would sit, right? It would congeal, coagulate. Nichnas Lamakam Shenichnas. Then the Kohen Gadol would go back into the Kodesh Akdashim. The Amad Bimakam Shamad, he would stand in the same place he stood, Ben Habadim. The Hizomimeno, Achas lamalo, v'sheva lamata. V'lo hoyim meskar lahazo yisro lamavu lamata. He didn't have in mind. He didn't actually spritz up. It's not like you know he had like a water gun, right? He's sprinkling the blood. The blood cannot get reach the the arayin. It wasn't supposed to go onto the arayin. It wasn't. It wasn't supposed to go onto the kruvim. In the direction, a little, you know, he went up, and then ela kemat slave. We'll see what that means. So that's how he would count. One, right? What does it mean, one? One above. And then one and one, meaning one below. One above and two. One and three. And what's the obvious question? Only do it one. Right, listen to me, right? You count one, yeah. and then one and one, yeah. one and two, one and three, one and Why four. The first time he didn't go down, he just did it on top. Right? The others have up and down. The first one just has up. No, but you know, let me explain how he did it. He would sprinkle one above, and then one below, two below, three below, four below, five so below. Clearly, you can't so where's the Right. Yeah. Even in Chelm, they don't count this way. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Even, right? They don't... When you count to seven, you don't say one and one, one and two, one and three. You just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He didn't sprinkle no, he didn't sprinkle each time. each time. No, yeah. he would just say one, one, one and one, one and two. I mean, you would think he could hold cheshven that when he's counting the three and the four, he already did the one on the top. But he's the kohen gadol after all. That much we'll, we'll give him credit for. So, well, what's the reason for that? So, the Gemara on Yuma Nun Hey, it should be there's a mistake on the sheet. It's Nun Hey Amid Aleph says. The Kuleyama, Mias, everyone agrees, Hazar, Rishayna, Tzricha, Minyan, Kalachas, Achas. That the first Spritz was counted with each one. My Taima, why is it? Achas, Viya, Achas. Certainly the Nigan is much nicer. Achas, Ushtayim. But still, why would they have to count like that? So you have a different sheet. This Reb Lazar, Amar, Shalayate, Bahazai. So he doesn't make a mistake. What does that mean? So Rashi explains that we want to like make a little delay between one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so he could like focus and remember that what number he's up to. I mean, okay, that helps him keep track. You would think one and two, one and three makes it more confusing. And then the Gemara says like this: Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan said, 
Amar Kra, it's a Pasuk you have to count. Because it says in this Pasuk, look back, and then it says, Why does it say Yaza two times, right? Amar Kra, Negra, Yaza. Shein Tam Lomer Yaza, Ma Tam Lomer Yaza, Limeid Al Azar Rishayna. It teaches on the first Shpritz, Shetzricha Minyan and Mkalachas Viachas, and it needs to be counted with each one. So that means like this. So we have two reasons why you have to count one, 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 two, one, three. One is to give him time so he doesn't make a mistake, and one is it's exer sakasov. What's the nafkamina? Nafkamina would be where he didn't count. Where he did, where he didn't count it, and he didn't make a mistake. So according to the first reason, those are the only reason to say one and two, one and three, so you don't make a mistake. But if he didn't make a mistake, you're yaitz. According to the second reason, it's exer sakasov. Fine. So you you have to do it. But the question is is, fine, this might be the reason, the, the logical, halachic reason why you have to do it, but al pi machshava, on the deeper meaning, what's the significance of counting the number one with each number? One, one and one, one and two, one and three, one and four. In other words, what's, who's the one? God. Who are the seven? What does that refer to? And why do you have to keep on mentioning one every time you count the seven? And what does that have to do with this week's parasha? Okay. So, we have an amazing Sefer that we've featured one time before, but a very long time ago. And that is, everybody knows that one of the great halachists of all time was Rav Moshe Isserlis, the Ramah. But many are not familiar that he was also one of the greatest Mikubalim of all time. He wrote a commentary on the Zayar. And he's also a tremendous Baal Machshava. He wrote, we know in Hilchos, Tumma Vata, Hilchos um, Yaradeh, he wrote Torah's Chatas. And he wrote a Sefer of Machshava on the deeper meaning of the Avodah of the Beis HaMikdash, called Tairas HaOela. It's basically, I don't think it's in print, and uh, this is courtesy of HebrewBooks.org. Look at number 8. Mm-hmm. Says Ramah in the Sefer, Tairas HaOela. Kevar Noida, it is known, Hazo Yisyem Kippurim, Achas Lamalo, Veshav Lamata. Like it's explained, Hilchus Yom Kippurim, Emir Tz Hashem. Vahatam, what's the reason? You ready for this? It's unbelievable. Shahayu Roim Zimalin Yen Yetzahara. The seven spritzes represent the Yetzahara. Hamachti Hadam. That make a person sin. What do seven have to do with the Yetzahara? Because those who are familiar know that the Gemara in Sukkah says, how many names does the Yetzahara have? Seven. Seven names. We'll see in a minute. Shah Yetzahara Nikra B'Shiva Shemais. There's seven spritzes below because there's seven things that pull us down. One up. There's only one thing that pulls you up. The Yetzir Taif. He only has one name. Yetzir Taif. Why do you count one, 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 two, one, three, one, four? Because everybody knows that you're supposed to serve Hashem, not only with the Yetzir Taiv, but the Yetzir as well. It says, um, <laughs> So it means you want to use the Kayach HaYetzir Hara and schlep it up. So therefore, the seven numbers are connected to the seven names of the Yetzir Hara. So you take the Yetzir Taiv and you say, one, one, you pull up one force of the Yetzir One, two, one, three, you want to pull up the Yetzir So you have one force, Mamala, Ach Echa Lamala, Veshiva Lamata. But with each force below, you want to schlep up the Yetzir upward. Okay? Vumayna ka azar shalmata shalmala, kamaysha amru, vikacha yamayna, why they count this way? Lahayrois, kimina roy, lashatif, Yetzir Hara, and Yetzir Taiv. And if you pull the Yetzirah up, you could use the Yetzirah to serve Hashem. Now, what's the source that the Yetzirah has seven names? It's a Gemara and Sukkah and Daf Nun Bezim and Aleph. Look at number nine. Darash Rabbi Avira, Vitem Rabbi Shuv and Levi. Shiva Shemos Yeshal Yetzirah. This is the, right, the Satan has seven names. What are his names? HaKadosh Baruch Hu Karoi Ra. God calls him bad. Shenemar Ki Yetzirah Levadam Ram Nurav. Moshe calls him Arel. Like the Pasuk says, Umaltim is Arla Savavcha. Yeah? David calls him Tame. Shanamar Lev Tahar Brali Elikim. God, give me a pure heart. Meklaud Iko Tame. Shalaymai calls him the Sine. Like the Pasuk says, Mrav Sainach Echlel Lechem. Then the Gemara says on the first wide line, Yeshaya calls him Michshal. 
Soilu soilu panu derech harim u'mechsho mi derech hami. When do we learn that? Very good. Yechezkel koroi even shenemer v'hasiroisi asleifo even mi b'sachem. And finally, Yoel calls him Tzfaini. These are the seven names. By the way, I saw in the Sefer Shvile Pinchas that because the Yetzirah has seven names, that could be what Shlom HaMelech means, Ki Sheva Yipal Tzadik. This Tzadik falls seven times because these are seven ways that the Yetzirah has in his arsenal. Right? What does it mean he has seven names? I think the Chidah explains in his Hakdama to the Hakadosh Shal Pesach. Yetzirah has seven main tactics to get a person to stumble. By the way, just parenthetically, the Gemara says in Masech the Shabbos that we paskin that how many books are there in the Torah? 27. In the Chumash? In the Torah? Seven. Chatzva Amudah Sheva. Right? Bereshis, Shemais, Vayikra, Bamidbar, before Vayivin Saya, Vayivin Saya, Bamidbar, Azar Yivin Saya, Devarim. So the Imre Yemes says, it's Barasi Yitzahara, Barasi Tyra Tavlin. Uh, so if there's seven Yitzharas, you need seven Chumashim to counteract. Okay, we once mentioned that. What's the point of view again? It's funny, it's like the viper, a snake. Okay? Fine. Then the Rama, in another Chelek of the Tarsal, also brings down this idea of spritzing one above and seven below. He brings down, You would spring on the Parachas, Sheva Lamata, Viachad Lamala, Lahayrois, Kiavshu Sheva Lamata, even though there's seven below, haya echan lamala, the goy verala inyan shamatim rata, and you could overcome the downward spiral. Why? With every force that pulls you down, you keep remember one, 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 two, one, three. Even though you have many things pulling you down, the one could overcome. What's the seven? The Yitzhahara Yeshle Sheva Shemois. The end said that the Rama learns these are seven descending powers of the Yitzhahara. They bring a person down, 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 down. But the neshama is yachid. That's the seichel. Is one above. And then the Ramah explains al pimach shava. That the Yitzhahara is seven. Because the Yitzhahara is a physical thing. The, 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 the physical realm is governed by the number seven. Like the days of the week. But the spiritual realm is only one. And therefore the Yitzhahara is only one. But bottom line is you could overcome the Yitzhahara. That's why we mention with each one, number one, one. One eight, one two, one three, one four, one five, one six, one seven. Okay. The grandson of the Chassam Soifer, the Shevet Soifer, quotes the Rama and says Pshad in the Rama. Now I don't believe he's saying Pshad in the Rama. He's sort of saying maybe his own Pshad, but he says the following idea: that why is the Kohen Gadol doing this on Yom Kippur? He's going into the Kodesh Hakdashim, and he's saying one above. One, 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 two. What, what, what's the message of the Kain Gadol? The Kain Gadol is trying to be Melitz Toiv on behalf of Kal Yisrael. He's trying to come up with a defense on their behalf. What's he saying to God? We know the Gemara says in Brachas Yud Zayin that one of the Tefillahs that the Amaram would end their Shemana Esrei with was Rebain Hu Aylamim Goliv Yadol Afanecha Sheret Sainenu Lassis Ritzancha God, we want to do your will. And what's Ma'akev? The Sar Shavis, the Yitzhahara. So the Kain Gadol is saying, he's saying, Rebbein look at these people. Look how hard it is. Going upward, they only have one Kayach. Going downward, they have seven Kayachas. Have Rachmanas on them. It's so difficult. It's like a way of being Melitz Toiv on behalf of Klai Yisrael. It's a way of uh, being Melitz Yosha on behalf of Klai Yisrael. It's a way of defending them. That's, he's going into the Kayachak Dashim. What, what's he telling God? He's only said one thing. He's saying, Rebbein Shalom. You know, give them a break. Cut them some slack. It's very difficult. The yeah, force is... There is a of to be, or have a Rachmanus, but there is a bunch of them who created the seven car place. So you're asking for a car of Barakul? Over any any creation? Any Melitz type, any, any Melitz says you can say, oh God, God knows already, but it's the way, right, we say to Hashem, Zachar ki afra anachna. God knows, uh, who knows better than Hashem ki afra anachna. He's the one who made us. So the Sefer Shri Pimchas points out that that's not exactly what the Ramah said. The Ramah didn't say that the Kain Gadol is being Melitz Toiv on our behalf. The Ramah actually said that what the, what the Kain Gadol is teaching us is that it's our job and responsibility to pull up the Yetzirah with the Yetzirah Toiv and join forces of the Yetzirah with the Yetzirah Toiv. 
But nevertheless, this is another dimension, a meaning of achas lamala v'sheva lamata, and why we count the number one with each of the seven, with, with each of the seven uh, countings below. Okay? Hold on to that for a few moments. Let's come back to our parsha. So the lamala is with Hashem? The lamala is the Yitzhah Toiv, and the lamata is the Yitzhah Hara, and the point is there's only one force going up, and there's seven fours going down. Let's come back to our parsha. We mentioned from the Bnei Yisassar that what? That every single year, the first week of Chaydash Elo, we lay in Parshas Shaifta. What's the meaning of that? Look in number 14. The Haschalas Elo, Kairin, Tomed, say their Shaiftim, the Shaitrim, Titan, Lacha. Shezehu Haschalas Hatshuva, the Ikara. This is the beginning of Tshuva, and this is the principle of Tshuva. What is? What is the fundamental principle of tshuva? Asher habal tshuva mechuyiv lahashiv shoyfet v'shoyter eitzel kol sharav. That any person who wants to do tshuva has to appoint two people at his gate, a judge and a ruler. What are his gates? The hainu kol hachushim, all of one's senses. Asher hema sha'arim ba'adam, which are the gates of a person. That God opened to use. So what are the gates? Number one and two, two eyes. Oznayim, two ears. Chaitam, two nostrils. Upe, the mouth. Barosh Hagviya, that's the the male organ. All of these things. Who's the judge? Your seichel. L'shoifet, to be a judge, it's a kol shar. Yishpoit b'tzedek, eis asher yishtamesh b'chushim, eis asher yaniach. You have to put a judge when to use it, when not to use it. Nobody said seven. Maybe there are a hundred, I don't know. We say in Vais Filin, as shivik nei ha menoira. Where's that? Where's the menoira have to do with anything? Okay. That's why the letter Zion is not found in Ashurata. Okay. So you have to put a judge by every gate. What you're allowed to look at, what you're not allowed to look at. What you're allowed to listen to, what you're not allowed to listen to. Now, what, what, what are you guarding your nose? That's, <laughs> well, what exactly, what, what, do you, what, do you, what can't you smell? Perfume. Trave. Trave? No, it's just no, is there a smell of trave? We'll see. And what's the shoifet? Okay, shoifet is a das. What you can, what you can't. What's the shoit there? Shoit there is a punish. What's that referring to? The shoit there who asher yanish is You have to put a, ju- um, a ruler to punish. Not only should you, before you look at something, you have to make a decision. Am I allowed to look? If you did look at something wrong, you take a dollar. <coughs> One level is give it to tzedakah, but that's not a good way to do it. Take the dollar, rip it up. It hurts more. Yeah, da, da, tzedakah, fine, good, I want to give tzedakah anyway. Rip it up, that's what the Bali Musar say. You want to control yourself? You make a knas. You make a knas. That if I do something wrong, take the dollar, rip it up. Oh, that, that yeah, kill. Oh, that is, that is, that is, that hurts. To rip up a dollar, or even to throw a quarter in the, oh, that's not, you could give a hundred dollars to tzedakah. You throw the quarter in the garbage. Oh, that's, I about tashras, this week's parasha, parasha shayftim. Right, that's what it has to do with the parasha. No, just okay. Um, it's not about tashras. Anything that's for a, a constructive purpose is not, is not about tashras. And then, what? That's a different story. Right? So, they shayfet v'shayftim. Every one of your senses, your eyes, your ears, and rabbi side. Now, how many gates are there? So, in the Sefer HaYetzirah, which is Meyuchas to Avram Avinu, it says, V'shiva she'aram l'nefesh. Yeah, Yaakov. It says, there's seven gates of the nefesh. Shtei enayim, shtei oznayim, u'shnei nikvei ha'af, the two nostrils, the ha'peh and the mouth. So the uh, Bnei Yisachar also wrote another Sefer on Chumash called Igra de Kala, not related to Igra de Pirka, right? He says, he quotes the Bnei Yisachar, he says the Bnei Yisachar, he, um, he quotes the Sefer Yitzira, the seven um, gates. He says, yeah, the founder, yeah, the original 
And you need to be mishabed all these seven gates, not to look, not to listen, not to smell, not to speak, not to eat, not to drink, only l'chvayt habayre. And who's the ruler? The seichel. Now let's let's draw the following analogy. Who's the ruler? The seichel. Malach. The mayach. Malach. What's in the mayach? Neshama. The neshama has has seichel has shara b'mayach on all the gates. The neshama has to be the shoifet, what to look at, what to listen to, what to smell, what to eat, and so forth. Can we learn the neshama is in the way? Okay, and then listen to what he says. He says that's the shoifet. What's the shoiter? Vinei kas was sifrei hamusar shehamaskil vahamesim einav al drachav. If you're really a person who wants to improve his ways, yira liknois es atzmai beknas al kol tnua tnua sheyavers pi Hashem. You should find yourself when you do navera. So a person wants to control his Lashon Hara, you know the best thing to do? Every time you see Lashon you take a buck, throw, send it through the shredder. You're not going to do it again so fast. Right? That's, that's a good way. And this, or to fast, right? Uh, like a, uh, the Ramak, like the Ramak suggests. So now this is the idea of the Bnei Sascha, the Igor, the Kala, that shoiftim v'shoitrim t'yielacha al kol sh'arecha, that every gateway, your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth, you need to appoint guards, what you're allowed to use them for, and you should appoint a shoita, you should knas yourself if you don't use it properly. Now, truth be told, the Bnei Yisachar was not the first person to come up with this explanation on Shoftim Meshachim Titein Lecha. The Shla Kadosh has already preceded him. Look at number seventeen. Very Se- can I just ask you? But the yeah. end of the pasuk says the Shoftim was a Amish Pasheda. So the way we've been interpreting so far is the Shoftim are personal, and they're the judges, and they prevent. You know, you should what, what be careful what you read, what yeah. you speak, or whatever. But the, the pasuk is talking the Shoftim was a Am. Mishpat said, that's, that's, how do you use, you know, are you using these to judge the rest of the nation? That's not personal, it's how you handle other people. So it could be, um, the Am refers to yourself. In many ways. Well, maybe next year we'll get up to the second part of the Pasuk. Okay. Right? <laughs> okay. Says the Shla. The Kanyesh Remez, Musr. This is a Remez. L'ha detan b'sefer Yitzira. Shiva Sharam heim benefesh. Shtei enayim. These are the seven gates on the head. But there are other gates. No, the, the two eyes don't work in tandem. They work in tandem. But sometimes there's something over there that this eye doesn't see. So you have to close your eyes. Sometimes there's something over there Right? There's something called visual therapy. Some people, their <coughs> eyes uh, don't work in confluence. But uh, sometimes, you have to guard each eye. And how about the local? You have to see you describe two things. Well, sometimes you have people on the phone, right? So this ear is already is, is talking to him. But you, even with this ear, you can't listen to Lashon Hara. Right? Okay. Should it should be the other way. Okay. Okay. So, well, hang on one sec. Says the Shla. These are the seven gates of the head. But there are other gates also. He says, the, um, the bris kodesh is a gate. And he even says, there are the gate that excretes the food. That's also a gate you have to watch. What does that mean? Don't eat like a behema. Till you become like a mole kivitsaya. And all these gates, shoiftim v'shoitrim, you need to judge and you need to knas. Okay, so this idea of the Bnei Yisachar, he was already preceded by the Shla. I, the Bnei Yisachar, says, well, there's a connection. Now, again, the Bnei Yisachar says, why do we lay in this parasha on Elul? Because the first step in Shuva is you got to guard the gate. That's the first step. If the gates are open, then the, the city is unprotected. How can you do Shuva? 
the, the enemy could, st- could still infiltrate. But even this idea that we lay in Parsha Shoftim in Chaydesh Elo, he was also preceded by the Kajan Tzamagid in Avod Yisrael. Look at number 18. Hinei HaParsha Hazois Nikra Tamid B'Chaydesh Elo. This Parsha we always lay in Parsha Elo. In Chaydesh Elo. Asha Hucha Noes, which has been set aside. Wachalish, for every person, Sheyashiv Labayroi. To return to his creator, how? The way you do it is look at the end of the piece. Because these seven sha'arim are the seven sha'arm of the nefesh, and you need to have shoiftim the shoitrim, and that is why we lay it during Parshas Elo. By the way, I just forgot to mention, what are you guarding your nose from? So you go, well, uh, the, the shla says, possibly the nose is the ayavera that is the most common. You know what you have to guard your nose from? Kas. Kas. Charoinaf. Charoinaf. from Haglish. I hear. Or, or Gaiva. But the two nostrils is Charoi Naf. So all these gateways have to be guarded. Ah. Oh. So it comes along Sefer Shvile Pinchas, and he has a beautiful idea. That this concept of Shoftim Meshachim Titen Lecha, of guarding the seven byways and highways and pathways and gateways of the Nefesh, which we said is the first step of tshuva. After all, the Bnei Yisachar of Yisrael says that's why we lean in in Chodesh Elo. The first step of tshuva is to guard the seven gateways of the Nefesh. That goes hand in hand with the Avoida of the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur. Achas Lamalo, the Shiva Lamata. Meaning what? The Yitzhahara looks to pull down the seven gates. Yitzhahara is standing right by these seven gates, making a person susceptible and liable to sin with your eyes. Yitzhahara is waiting right by the eyes all day long. He doesn't let up to look at something that we shouldn't, to listen to something we shouldn't. And the Yitzhah HaToiv is the one, is the Seichel, is trying to guard the seven gateways. So what does the, what does the Kain Gadol do on Yom Kippur? Achas v'achas, use the Yetzir Toiv on your eye. Achas v'shnayim, the other eye. Achas v'sholosh, one ear. Achas v'yav, the fourth. Achas v'sheva. That's the avoid of Elul. Elul is... Echad l'mala v'sheva l'mata. Chodesh Elul is... Echad l'mala v'sheva l'mata. Says the Sefer Shvira Pinchas. Elul, a new Rosh Yitevos. That Chodesh Elo is Acha Samala Veshiva Lamata. Take a look at number 19. He says, Ata Boyure, come and see. Ki Harayan Aniskov Shalak Doshim Alolo. This lofty thought of these holy people, Miskashim Lahafli, fits in wondrously, Umeirim, the Ar Bahir, and illuminates with a very clear light as Dibri Harama Batara Sa'ila, the words of Raman Tara Sa'ila, Ki Akoyin, Shazarka Sadam Yema Kipurim. The kind who sprinkles the blood on Yom Kippur, Echa Acha Samala V'Sheva Lamata, one above and seven below. His kavin lahashes hayitzer atoyv. His kavana is to make the yitzer toiv, which is one, rule over haneshama shebemayach. Right, the yitzer toiv is in the neshama, which is achas lamala to rule over the yitzer hara, which is shiva lamata, which are the seven forces of yitzer hara. Nimsa. Next paragraph. Kizrika sakoyin gadol v'yom kippurim echa lamala v'sheva lamata. He he kedei lahamshich liyisrael as a kedusha to draw kedusha on us sheyuchul akayim b'shleim as sivay akasam that we should fulfill shoiftim b'shoitrim titen lecha. In other words, the first passing in this week's parsha is what a point guards on what the seven gates. That, why do we lay it in Elo? That's what Elo is all about. Achad lamala v'shem lamata nifla lahaven. Next paragraph. B'zem asha hoisif haramol avar atam. That's why the Ramah adds. Shatirif at Kohen Gadol's misbar shall achas im kol sheva. That's what we do when you when, uh, now in Yom Kippur when you do achas via achas achas ushnayim. Now you realize it's an avoda. You want to make the Yitzhatoy rule over all seven. 
כל שם הזו יש למטה כדי לצרף בכך את היצר הטוב עם שבע כוח אשר יצר רע להפגע לטוב. What's the meaning? That the neshama should rule over all the zayin sharm of the nefesh. Why do you do this avoda in Elul? Yom Kippur is already a little late. You don't have the... Chance to, to actually become a shofet and a shofet. For the, for the future. Maybe, you know, first you got to start down here in this world. First we do our avoid for 30 days, and after that, then the Kanyagal kind of is ready to, uh, you know, put, bang the nail on the head and do it in the Kashak Doshim. And finally we conclude, Me'ata, Ya'iru, Einenu, Fiyismach, Libenu. Now we're overjoyed, Lahavin HaRemez, to understand the Remez of Chaydash Elul. What's Chaydash Elul? Achas, Lamala, Keshiva, Lamata, to teach that in the month of Elo, the month of Tshuva, you have to appoint guards and rulers over your eyes, over your ears, over your nose, and most importantly, the seventh and most important gate, over your mouth. Now, by the way, let's just add, it's not on the sheets, that the Sefer HaYetzirah continues, you can look it up, that the seven gates correspond to the seven days of the week. And Shabbos, of course, the seventh day, corresponds to the seventh gate, which is the mouth. Which is why there's a special Indian to learn Torah on Shabbos. Because Shabbos corresponds to the peh, the gate of the peh. Therefore, on Shabbos, we, we exercise the correct way to use the mouth, and that is to be involved with Limit Atar on Shabbos, and that's why the Ben Ishchai writes in Pasha Shemois, that every learning you do on Shabbos is a thousand times more valuable than learning you do during the week. Because that's the whole tachlis of Shabbos, to sanctify the seventh gate, which is corresponds to the seventh day of the week. Wow. And maybe as suggested by the Shri of Pinchas, that's why in Havdalah, as Shabbos is coming to an end, we exercise all these seven gates, Latayv. You look at the Neirois, you smell the Besamim, you listen to the Havdalah, you answer Amen and make the Bracha, to exercise all the seven gates as the seventh day of the week is leaving. And then there's uh, a tefillah. If you look in some sedurim, they have especially Israeli sedurim, the Rabbanish Olam, it talks about that uh, you should watch over, because you should help us pull the sharim. Oh. It through the Aleph Bays, and uh, each shah, 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 I can tell you that somebody told me, yeah. Yeah. somebody told me to say that Indian, say that tefillah after I lost my job 20 years ago, in two weeks, and I was out of work for about eight months, and two weeks later I had a job. That actually should give me advice two months so, ago. Listen, advice um, actually, it's interesting, that is brought down, is a very ancient tool, it's brought down in the Yushalmi. Yeah, I, I, that's the only, that, of all the tools, that's the tool that I say. I'm not so sure. The original coin that tool, that's every month. You've just experienced another Torah class, brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.